Hi, Apartment Therapy. Welcome to my 674 square foot apartment in Brooklyn. So probably the first thing you've noticed is this incredible skyline view. It's amazing. It's absolutely the focal point. It's the reason why I got this place, but it does pose some challenges. I lose very valuable and precious wall space. So any type of storage uh, furniture or bookshelves or anything that you line against a wall to put your many things. I don't have. And on top of that, this room is a triangle. But I was very fortunate in that this apartment was actually a model unit in the building. So it came pre-staged and I loved what the interior designer did with the place and kind of followed in their footsteps in terms of where the couch is, where the chair is, where the coffee table is, even where I was gonna put the TV. It's a TV that pops out. And the dining table, which, you know, doubles as a workspace for me, everything I feel like has a great flow and takes advantage of the triangle <laughs> in the best way possible. Another thing this apartment came with was an amazing paint job. They did a gray half wall in the main living space. And I used that almost as a marker to not go any higher. Anything that went higher than I would say about waist height, would just take away from the beauty that is Manhattan. An issue I run into all the time, thanks to these great floor to ceiling windows, is that the sun actually bleaches all of my furniture. So that's another reason why I opted for neutrals, because if I've got these bold, beautiful colors, they're gonna go about five shades lighter within frankly, a week. So I can get away with having a black fade to a gray or having a deeper brown fade to something like a camel. You need to have a pop of color. And in my situation, I love a lime green moment. So I have everything from live plants to moss balls to various decor items that kind of allow that little pop to happen so that it doesn't just become entirely muted and dull and boring because ain't nobody got time for that. I can't avoid talking about my pride and joy and that is my striped Beetlejuice throne is what I call it. Obviously that turns into a focal point of the space, but it works and it's not too busy because again, everything that surrounds it is a solid end table, a solid lamp, a solid couch and the coffee table right in front of it. So I knew obviously I wanted to go into this apartment with a neutral color scheme, but I was also very fortunate to take a piece of decor from my grandparents from the 60s. It was actually the clothing store logo for a shop that they had where Betsy Johnson actually got her start. And that I feel like informed practically every design decision in here. Obviously that black and white color scheme that plays throughout. And it's now a piece of history in my own apartment. Storage in this apartment was an ish you. And I am actually a food travel and lifestyle writer. So I am sent hundreds of products on an annual basis that I have to review. And there is no space in this place for them. So I've got two closets, one of which is a coat closet. The other is full of clothes in my bedroom. So I had to be super smart about the furniture that I bought to ensure that everything could have stuff put in it, under it, around it. I have laundry bags literally full of beauty products, food products that line up behind my couch. Credenza that obviously has a lot of drawers and storage space. A storage bench that's like my little coffee nook, but it has I think tax returns from literally the past 10 years. So <laughs> entertaining is everything for me. I came from a studio before this where we all would sit on my bed when I would have people over. And what is more inviting than a bar cart? This was a housewarming gift. It's a male stripper, but who's gonna say no to that? Not me. <laughs> and I have a deep obsession with Jonathan Adler. He's my favorite designer of all time. And he does this amazing line 
of Rocket liquor holders. But of course, you're limited when it comes to a bar cart. And that's when you have to travel on over to the beverage area, which is where I store syrups, more wine, more booze. But if I'm going to be a little bit healthier, I've got an entire tea collection, as well as some water enhancements. And last but certainly not least, a coffee bar set up with my Nespresso. I can't live without it. And far too many pods. <laughs> a great bookshelf rule that I like to follow, especially if things are getting messy and chaotic, is to separate all of your books by color and size. That way you can position them in a way that is more aesthetically pleasing. And then if you still have too many books, then it's frankly just keep out what you like most and get rid of the rest of them. Everything is digital nowadays, so I treat my books more so as conversation starters, decor items, instead of things that I actually use. So what I'm basically trying to tell you is I don't actually read, it's all fake, it's all just for show, but no, <laughs> most of these are actually cookbooks. So. They're beautiful, uh, both inside and out, and they're hardcover. That sturdier spine and exterior also makes for just a, I would say, more luxe design moment. I am a firm believer that when you are dead on the inside, you should bring life into your living spaces. So I am a hashtag plant daddy even though these are like probably the easiest plants to care for, they're succulents. Other than this orchid, which I have kept alive for no joke seven years, go me. I am also on a whole other level of OCD when I thought that these planners were fading in color and reading a bit too gold. I took it upon myself to spray paint them chrome. If one thing looks like an eyesore, it's either getting tossed or it's getting changed. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the bedroom. This is where the magic happens. Just kidding, I am very single. If you have exceptionally large muscles and you aren't annoying, hit me up. Um, but it's a very tiny, tiny space, but I kind of like that. When I sleep, I'm very much into cocoon coffin vibes. The great thing about this space is that it came with an awesome paint job. We have those gray half walls in the living area, but they actually, used that same gray and painted the entire space of my bedroom with it. So I prefer a dark bedroom and it's just nice that I was able to move into it without having to do anything. We've got this random ass column. <laughs> like why? Like I need to have a discussion with the architects who came up with this because this makes absolutely no sense. I almost wish it was like a refrigerator or something of value or purpose, but I had to kind of fill in these nooks. And because I am a writer, I put a desk here so I can look out on my New York City skyline view. Ask me how many times I've written at this desk. That's a whopping zero. <laughs> so instead I just print things. <laughs> and then on the other side, we've got another great storage moment. Again, I'm not sitting here pondering life, looking out my window. <laughs> I am using it to store sheets. We're dealing with storage issues yet again in the bedroom, but I have invested in a few pieces that 100% work and they are not expensive like this wardrobe. I've got a ton of clothes in this bad boy and this is just the beginning. I also have stuff in this dresser. I have stuff in this closet. Now this is the closet and by the closet, I mean the biggest one that is in this entire apartment. But I make do with what I have and I color code my shirts. They all have to be on the same type of hanger but I wanted to maximize this space as much as possible. And that's why I bought these see-through drawers, which have really come in handy. Not only do they stack all the way to the ceiling, but I know exactly what's in them, including my, my drag section. <laughs> I do drag once a year uh, or twice a year sometimes, depending on the year. But yeah, there's a makeup palette from Forever 21. I'm really high budget. This 
gorgeous away trunk suitcase is actually filled with booze. <laughs> so when I've got people over and we run out, which is likely the case, I just, you know, pop into my bedroom, which sounds terrible, <laughs> to grab another bottle or two and the party continues. This is actually a platform bed. And, you know, most of them come with those wooden slats to rest your mattress on top of. I actually got rid of those slats and bought a very inexpensive riser. So that gives me the space to put storage bags underneath. They're full of clothes, they're full of extra blankets. And I tend to switch things out based on season. So if it's winter, I've got my summer stuff under here and vice versa. Y'all know I love a showstopper and this headboard is no exception. I wanted one fit for a king or queen because it's a queen size bed and I am a queen. <laughs> but I do just love that inviting plush velvet fabric. It's classic, it's timeless. The bedding itself too, I am in love with. It's of course, Jonathan Adler. He actually released a line of linens. I guess I'm a Kardashian because they all have like 7,000 pillows on their bed and I maybe was a little bit inspired by it, but uh, yeah, that's where the pillows come into play. I feel like when I'm dreaming in here, I'm always dreaming of where I wanna be or where I should be. I've got obviously home base. I've got where I aspire to be, Tokyo. I have not done Japan yet. I have one of my favorite European cities, Prague. And then I have where I'm convinced my husband is, which is Sydney. And I'll just say no comment and leave it at that. <laughs> And maybe my biggest pride and joy is Herman, <laughs> a monkey. And I've had him since I was a baby. He's so cute. But when these non-existent boyfriends come over, I have to hide him because <laughs> maybe this is why I'm still single. Herman. <laughs> So I'd say the biggest gripe I have with this apartment, unfortunately, is the kitchen space. I just don't love a galley kitchen. It makes uh, cooking not a breeze. There really isn't countertop space to prep. And I thought about putting something over here, but it just, I don't like when things seem too cramped. Also, this is a horrible oven. And if I did have something here and I have, somewhat of a big booty. I would be knocking into things and that's just not cute. So funny enough, even though I am a cookbook author, I put out the book Basic Bitchin', I do very little cooking in this space. I am in my air fryer era and that sucker just gets pulled out and put right here. This is where you can kind of have moments again to show off your personality, things that really speak to you as a person. And I guess margarita glasses and greeting people by the word whore really speak to me. <laughs> this is where I keep a majority of my food. And I have to honestly clean this out every week or so because I just get sent so many products to review or to test or, you know, to even cook and recipe develop. It also doubles as storage for my suitcases. So I have like three suitcases within this big one. And it is the only place in my apartment other than my bedroom where I can store something that reaches a high ceiling. Next is a place where I spend a lot of my time because I have stomach problems. <laughs> my bathroom. And so I had to make it nice and welcoming and inviting. But also you can have fun with a bathroom. I have a little sign that says, hope your day is as nice as your butt. I have this great piece of art above it. It's a 3D heart collection from my neighbor down the hall named Bo Jones. His stuff is incredible. Check him out. As I mentioned, I'm sent millions of products. One area is actually the beauty industry. They send me a ton of grooming supplies, skin products. So I had to get something that went over my toilet so that when I am doing my nightly routine for this skin, I can just keep grabbing new products, testing them out. And this is the star, what I talked about, that amazing piece that I inherited from my grandparents from their clothing store. It got me really excited about just carrying black and white through the entire space down to this runner, which goes into the kitchen that it almost seems like they were 
part of the same collection, crazy enough. When it came to this entryway, I think not a ton of thought was put into it, if I'm being honest. I love these vases. They actually hold the ashes of my ancestors. No, I'm just kidding. They're from Overstock and I just thought they were cute. Of course, having a coat rack because I'm talking about my love for entertaining, as well as this full length mirror. It's the first thing you see when you get home and it's the first thing you see when you leave. So you can do a little outfit check. Yikes, she's not looking the best today. The fact that it's at the end of the hallway, it opens up the space because it, you know, obviously shows the reflection down the hall and it brings and casts a light into this area. And this could potentially be the darkest spot of my entire apartment because it's, I think, other than the bathroom, the only space that has no windows whatsoever. And this little entry nook over here, again, just a place to offer extra storage. I just keep a little tray for my wallet, my sunglasses, my AirPods, and then what used to be filled with COVID tests, and I think actually still is, <laughs> I've also used for just leftover electronics and uh, gift bags and wrapping paper, things that really don't have a home in the rest of the apartment. I also love when life imitates art, and because I am a wordsmith, I bought this pillow years ago. It's just a J Scrabble tile, J for Joey, but also my birthday happens to be June 8th. So obsessed with this pillow, which sounds so bizarre and creepy, that I had it tattooed on my arm. I mean, I didn't have the pillow tattooed, but I had the J Scrabble tile, but it was inspired by this pillow that I've seen for, gosh, a decade now, sitting on my couch. Honestly, I have had quite a few living arrangements. <laughs> some great, some not so great, but through it all, I've learned that I wanna look for beauty in the unexpected. I love going to flea markets. I love going to garage sales. I love to pop into these hole in the wall shops on my travels and just find what resonates with me. And it could just be something that makes me happy or something that I find uniquely beautiful. But I've learned to not take items or even these experiences for granted and to incorporate them into my day to day. And I think it really does show through my design choices this kind of intent to, to do that and to uncover the beauty in things that maybe are a bit unconventional or out of the box.